as James nears the end of the book here into chapter 5, he begins to speak about rich people. Now, in verse number 1, he says, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. So there's quite a bold statement there. Who's he speaking to? What's he speaking about? Well, he addresses these people as rich. He's already spoken about presumptuous business people who would assume that they're going to travel and trade and they don't take God into account in their planning. He's already dealt with that, but here he's not dealing with that. He's speaking about a different issue and the issue that he wants to deal with here is the conduct of the rich and the consequent judgment that's going to come upon them here in verse number one. So he will make a statement here and we'll just box that statement in. And that statement is that they have to weep and howl. And the reason they have to weep and howl are the miseries that are coming upon them. So who exactly is he speaking about? Well, in verse 2 down to verse number 6 here, in fact the rest of the little section that we're going to deal with here, is a fourfold description of who these rich people are. And they are described in terms of their conduct. For example, in verse 2 and verse 3, these are people who have been hoarding their riches. And we'll think about that. And then in verse number 4 down here, these are people who have been defrauding their workers. So think about that. And then verse number five, the third characteristic and description of their conduct is that they've been marked by self-indulgence. And so we see, for example, pleasure and luxury and the fattening of their hearts. And then lastly, in verse four, there is the issue of unjust gain, echoes of Ahab and of Naboth and his vineyard in the Old Testament. We'll think about that in a moment or two. So the rich, it's not just all rich people. The Bible never condemns rich people for being rich. But here we're seeing that they gain their riches um, by unjust means. They abused other people in the gaining of those riches. And also the use of their riches has been totally selfish, self-indulgent, and also, in a sense, burying and hoarding the riches that they've been uh, given and have earned and not using them in a way that God would, would desire. Now he's going to demonstrate that this is actually a test of faith because no Christian would operate in this way. No Christian should be characterised by these four things. No Christian should seek to hoard wealth uh, and so on. And he's going to bring this forward as a test of faith and also he will go on from this and he will speak about how we should behave if we've been subjected to this sort of behaviour by the rich in our community or in the workplace or uh, that we've had contact with. So let's come back up to verse number one and look into this little statement uh, that James has. Now, just remember that when he speaks about uh, the rich here in verse one, that he's speaking about those who are characterised by unjust gain, hoarding, uh, selfishness and so forth. It's not speaking about all rich people. And um, the Bible never has blanket statements about rich or poor. There's no spiritual, intrinsic spiritual value in either being rich or poor. It's how we behave ourselves within those circumstances that's always at stake. So he says, come now ye rich. And they have to do two things. They have to weep and they have to howl. Now, these indicate mourning. And the idea of weeping would be sobbing and sobbing out loud, howling again out loud. It is repentance. It is uh, an expression of sorrow. And it is because of miseries that are coming upon you. Now, these miseries that are coming, this is not a general statement of coming tribulation and trouble into the world. Rather, these are specific. These are uh, particular. And it's important to know that the conduct of these rich people has been noted by God and will be 
uh, there will be, I should say, a, a day of reckoning. There will be an accounting that has to be done. And therefore, there should be an anticipation of that. There should be a fear of that. And that fear is because that there are miseries coming. There is judgment coming. There's a reckoning coming for those who abuse others, for those who are unrighteous in their dealings. And he says, this is coming. So this is pointing um, to future judgment. That's important in our day to remember that people who behave in this way will have to answer for their conduct in a coming day. So let's move down and see the four characteristics um, that mark these uh, wealthy people. So he says here that your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth-eaten, your gold and silver are corroded. So we have there three things. And the overall point here is that they had heaped up treasure. Now this treasure down here is described in three ways. Number one, it's described as riches that are corrupted. Number two, it's spoken of as garments that are moth-eaten. And number three, as gold and silver uh, that are corroded. And these were the three ways you could measure wealth. You would measure wealth in grain. He says that's corrupted. You would measure wealth in garments, and they're moth-eaten, and in coin, in gold and silver, and that is rusted or corroded. And this corrosion, that is the effect of that corruption, the, the moths that are eating the garments, the, the, the rust that's devaluing the coin, is going to give evidence, is standing as a witness against them and will be held against them in that coming day. Why? Because it's evidence that they have been heaping up treasure and doing so in the last days. That is, doing so even when it's obvious that this earth is heading for judgment and that this is not the future, this is not eternal, this is time limited by God. And despite that, there's a heaping up of treasure in these last days, hoarding resources for uh, selfish reasons, for pride, for arrogance, uh, for the enjoyment of being wealthy for wealth's sake, and not using wealth for what it's, it should be used for, to help others to be compassionate and so forth. So we see here that the first thing that they will account for is heaping up treasure in the last days. Now we come to these next wages and then the second thing we have here um, with the word indeed. And he's going now to speak about the defrauding of workers. I was just trying to catch the word there. There it is in the second line, which you kept back by fraud. Now these labourers would likely be uh, day labourers, which the Lord often spoke about. And so if they were not paid for their day's work, then they would have no money to take back to their home and they would have been defrauded and there would have been real need. And he says this, that the wages, like the rust in the previous verse, cry out, they are the evidence. They cry out about the injustice of this. And the reapers who have been working all day in the field and have nothing, they cry out as well. And so the wages are crying out and the, the reapers are crying out. And, and this is heard. It is heard by the Lord of hosts, which is that uh, Old Testament name of God, which is very much a military term, speaks about the resources of God, the armies of heaven and so forth. And it is he who hears the injustice uh, of this situation when people are having their wages withheld. And again, it's a very practical thing. Christians should never withhold wages from those who have earned them and who are owed them justly. And if this does happen, then it comes to the attention. It reaches the ears of the Lord of hosts, who is all authoritative, who has the resources of heaven at his disposal. Then we come to uh, number three and four. So number three up here, and then number four down here, and it separates in there. 
and so I'll just underline the fourth one to distinguish it from the third one. So the third one is that these people who were wealthy were marked by self-indulgence. So they hoard their wealth, they gain their wealth by um, withholding it from those who have earned it. And then thirdly, they spend their money on themselves, on pleasure, on luxury. They fatten their hearts as a day of slaughter. It's a really unpleasant, unattractive picture of self-indulgence. And of course, when there is self-indulgence from someone who hoards their own money, then they seek to obtain their money by unjust means. And so they condemn, ultimately they murder, they rob the just, and they do so to enrich themselves so that they might indulge themselves and then that they might maintain their hoard and not have that diminished at all. And I mentioned a few minutes ago the story of Ahab, which is very much worth reading um, with Naboth and his vineyard. And you went to the Book of Kings to get that story. And that story is, a, is an example of a king who really had everything he needed. And yet he wanted what didn't belong to him. And so he uh, eventually accepted the vineyard after his wife Jezebel had had Naboth murdered. It's a very sad story. And yet Naboth comes out of it well because he was a just person. He wouldn't sell his vineyard. Naboth, Ahab, sorry, took it in any event and also took his life with it. So we come back to the whole section from verse 1 down to verse 6, and he's been speaking to the rich. Not, as I mentioned, everyone who's rich, but those, as we've seen, who are hoarding, heaping up treasure in the last days. Those who are defrauding their workers. Those who are living in pleasure and luxury and are fattening their hearts, and those who have condemned and murdered the just. Then what, what, what then is the, the point for us and the flow of thought? I, I was thinking there was really two issues we need to take out of this. And, and first of all, um, when we think about those rich people, we must not be like them. Don't be like them. Don't become that person. Don't be the person who's unjust. Don't be the person who robs people of their due wages. Don't be the person that hoards all their finance. Don't be the person that is willing to uh, simply be self-interested and self-indulgent. Don't be that person. And secondly, um, if you are a victim of such a person, so if you're a victim, read on. Because James has got something to say to you and he wants to speak to you about patience. That's in the next section. And he speaks about the coming of the Lord and the need to have patience when we be subjected to unjust, unrighteous behaviour by the rich that we've been speaking about here in verse 1 down to verse number 6. It is a trial of faith to be able to handle wealth and to gain wealth righteously. Thank you.